18 ridiculous rules the royal family staff have to follow. Are you ready to peek behind the curtain of the royal household? We all know the royals lead a glamorous life, but did you know that the staff who serve them must follow some of the most bizarre rules? From forbidden nail polish colors to specific methods of serving food, the royal staff must abide by a strict set of guidelines. Brace yourself for a glimpse into the bizarre and often bewildering world of royal protocol. Keep watching to discover 18 ridiculous rules that guide the royal family staff. Number 1. Social Butterflies In today's world, social media is a way of life for many people. However, for the staff of the royal family, having a personal social media account is strictly forbidden. This is because anything posted on social media can have significant consequences, not just for the individual, but also for the royal family as a whole. Furthermore, it is illegal to take pictures of the ruling monarch within the palace walls. Staff members are prohibited from posting any information, pictures, or updates about their work with the royal family or their personal life that could potentially compromise their loyalty or confidentiality. This includes any information about the members of the royal family or their activities, as well as any sensitive information about their work. Furthermore, a dedicated team closely manages and monitors the royal family's social media presence, so the staff's social media doesn't create confusion or conflict. While this rule may seem strict and limiting, it is a necessary measure to ensure that the royal family's reputation is protected and maintained. The staff must keep their personal lives separate from their work with the royal family to maintain the highest level of professionalism and confidentiality. Number 2. Dress Code The royal family's dress code is famously strict and formal, with specific guidelines for every occasion. The staff who work with the royal family must also adhere to this dress code, which can pose a few issues. Firstly, the dress code can be expensive to maintain, especially for those who don't have a high income. Staff members may need to purchase formal clothing and accessories, which can be a significant financial burden. Secondly, the dress code may not always be practical, particularly when it comes to footwear. For example, female staff members are required to wear closed-toed shoes with low heels, which may not be comfortable for long periods of standing or walking. Finally, the dress code can also be culturally insensitive. For example, the requirement for female staff members to wear stockings can be seen as outdated and inappropriate, particularly for those who do not typically wear them in their culture. Number 3. Traditions and Norms The royal family is steeped in tradition, and many of these traditions have been upheld for centuries. However, some of these traditions can be outdated and no longer relevant to modern times. The staff who work with the royal family must also uphold these traditions, which can pose some challenges. For example, the tradition of bowing or curtsying to the royal family is a long-standing practice that's still upheld today. While it may seem respectful, some argue that it reinforces an outdated class system and can be uncomfortable for those who are not used to it. Other traditions, such as the requirement for members of the royal family to travel with a black outfit in case of sudden death, may seem outdated in the modern era of rapid communication and transportation. While tradition is an important part of the royal family's identity and history, it is important to consider which traditions are still relevant and meaningful in the modern era, and which may need to be updated or phased out. Number 4. No Selfies The royal family is one of the most recognizable families in the world, and it's not uncommon for members of the public to request autographs or selfies with them. However, the staff who work with the royal family are strictly prohibited from engaging in this behavior. This rule is in place to protect the privacy and security of the royal family, as well as to maintain a professional and dignified image. Allowing staff members to take selfies or sign autographs could lead to breaches of confidentiality, as well as potentially dangerous situations, if the public were to become too intrusive. While the rule may seem strict, it is a necessary measure to ensure the safety and security of the royal family, as well as to maintain their image and reputation. Staff members must maintain a professional and respectful distance from the public, even if it means disappointing fans who are eager for a photo or autograph. Number 5. Skirts or Inconveniences 
Female staff members who work with the royal family are required to wear a specific type of skirt, known as a weighted skirt. These skirts are designed to be heavy and cling to the body, which helps to prevent any unfortunate wardrobe malfunctions that could be embarrassing or disrespectful in front of the royal family. While the weighted skirts may serve a practical purpose, they can also be uncomfortable and restrictive for the staff who must wear them. They can be hot and difficult to move around in, which can be particularly challenging for those who must stand for long periods. Additionally, the requirement for female staff members to wear a skirt can be seen as outdated and gendered, particularly if male staff members are not required to wear a similar garment. While the weighted skirt may seem like a minor detail, they highlight the strict and often uncomfortable dress code that staff members must adhere to when working with the royal family. Number 6. Quiet One of the many rules that staff members who work with the royal family must adhere to is the requirement for silence during meals. This rule is meant to ensure that the royal family can enjoy their meals in peace and privacy without any distractions or interruptions. While the rule may seem simple, it can be difficult for staff members who are accustomed to a more social and interactive dining experience. Sitting in silence for the duration of a meal can be uncomfortable and awkward, particularly if the meal lasts for an extended period. Additionally, the rule can create a powerful dynamic between the royal family and their staff members. Staff members may feel subordinate or inferior, which can be demoralizing and create a negative work environment. However, the rule is part of the royal family's long-standing tradition and etiquette, and staff members must adhere to it as a sign of respect and professionalism. Number 7. Seeking Royal Permission Another strict rule that members of the royal family and their staff must follow is the requirement to seek royal permission for the marriage. This rule is in place to ensure that members of the royal family do not marry individuals who may pose a security or reputation risk. The rule was famously demonstrated in 1936 when King Edward VIII abdicated the throne to marry Wallace Simpson, a divorced American woman. Since then, royal family members are required to seek permission from the monarch before marrying, and the marriage must meet certain criteria, such as the partner being of noble birth or having a suitable background. For staff members who are romantically involved with someone outside their social or professional circle, seeking royal permission can be a daunting and intimidating process. It can also create a power dynamic between the royal family and their staff members as they must seek approval for their personal life. Number 8. No Nicknames Another surprising rule that staff members who work with the royal family must follow is the prohibition of nicknames. Members of the royal family are expected to be addressed by their official titles or names only, and nicknames are strictly prohibited. This rule is meant to maintain a sense of formality and respect when interacting with members of the royal family. Using a nickname could be seen as disrespectful or overly familiar, which could create an inappropriate dynamic between staff members and the royal family. While the rule may seem trivial, it highlights the strict and hierarchical nature of the royal family and their traditions. Staff members need to understand and respect the requirement as it's an integral part of maintaining the image and reputation of the royal family. Number 9. No Displays of Affection one of the most well-known and strictly enforced rules for members of the royal family and their staff is the prohibition of public displays of affection. This means that royal family members and their staff must refrain from any physical displays of affection, such as holding hands, kissing, or hugging in public. The rules in place to maintain the dignity and formality associated with the royal family and to prevent any inappropriate behavior or scandalous rumors. It also emphasizes the importance of maintaining a professional image and separating personal relationships from professional ones. For staff members who may have close personal relationships with members of the royal family, such as close friends or partners, the rule can be difficult to follow, as they must keep their emotions and affections in check when in public. However, the rule is an important aspect of the royal family's traditions and etiquette and it highlights the strict expectations placed on members of the royal family and their staff. Number 10. Royal Waiters The British royal family observes a strict protocol in all their activities. 
They honor an individual's rank, and one of the practical ways they give honor is to ensure that the one with the highest rank gets first privileges. For example, King Charles will be the first royal member to step into an official meeting followed by his wife with Prince William and Catherine closely behind them. King Charles is the first to leave a party, no one is expected to eat until he begins eating, and immediately after he finishes his meal, everyone stops eating. So some of these rules also apply to the royal staff members, since they're also reflections of the monarchy. The staff of the royal family also observe certain dining rules. They can only take their meals after the royal family's begun their meal. Since they're not present at the king's table, I doubt the meal's finishing rule applies to them. This rule also benefits the staff since they won't fear being called upon in the middle of their meal. Imagine eating your meal and your superior demands you begin a three-hour task immediately. You wouldn't be happy and the food would likely be wasted. Since the royals hate wasting resources, this scenario won't happen. Number 11. Watch your mouth. Traditionally, it's rude to butt into a conversation your superiors are having or speak to your superior without being spoken to. Although this rule may be flexible with other Britons, the custodians of British customs and traditions honor it and expect those around them to do the same. Protocol dictates the subordinates do not speak to the superior unless spoken to, so the domestic staff of the royal household is not expected to speak to the royals or initiate a conversation with the royals. The job of these superhumans is to help the royals live a stress-free life. While the royals focus on the pressures of their status, work with their charity organizations, and go on diplomatic tours. The royals also respect the opinions of their staff, but in a formal setting, everyone has their roles and the hierarchy of positions must be respected. However, when royals speak to their staff, the staff members are expected to respond accordingly. Refusal to respond to a direct address is rude and unbecoming behavior. Number 12. Shoelaces Staff members are likely the first individuals that guests see when they visit the palace or other royal abodes. They're the unspoken representatives of the monarchy, so their appearance and manner also narrate an unspoken tale about the royals. Since royalty has a specific interest in appearance, their staff is expected to follow suit. All staff members are mandated to appear smartly dressed at all times. This implies that their hair, clothing, shoes, and other accessories must be perfectly done. Even their shoelaces must be ironed to ensure they look pristine. The difference between the best and the second best is a 1% increase in performance. The royal family would not be well loved if they permitted lousy appearance and performance. So if staff are to iron the shoelaces or use their performance to boost or maintain the position of the monarchy, who are we to raise an eyebrow? It's likely the 1% attention to detail and performance that distinguishes commoners from royalty. Number 13. To vacuum or not to vacuum. The excellence of 1% comes into play once again. Did you know that the cleaning staff is prohibited from using electronic vacuums on the rugs and carpets in the palace? This may sound like a cumbersome task, but many rugs and carpets in the palace are antiques, so continuously using electronic vacuums on them will damage them. Hence, these rugs are cleaned and maintained with a soft brush, whereas other areas like the staircases can be vacuumed. Furthermore, experts state that the best way to vacuum your space is to either vacuum in straight lines or side to side. Vacuuming this way ensures all debris and dust are effectively collected. While everyone else can ignore this advice and vacuum differently, the royal household is interested in a 1% increase in results. Don't be surprised if the royal cleaning staff is expected to vacuum in straight lines to create a specific pattern. Number 14. Fold Toilet Paper Folding toilet paper is hotel housekeeping 101. If five-star hotels practice folding toilet paper, why should the royal housekeeping be exempted? Folding the toilet paper a certain way indicates that the toilet's been taken care of. It also helps the user to identify the end of the tissue paper. The latter option is a thoughtful gesture since most people can see the end of the paper, but it may stick to the rest of the tissue paper. Hence, royals who easily travel across the world get five-star treatments at the hotel they reside in and learn to become accustomed to the same privileges at their home. Number 15. Salutations 
In various cultures of the world, the first name basis is only reserved for beloved family members and close associates, while other cultures are more liberal with their association. The British are a conservative lot, so not everyone has the privilege of addressing the royals or those in the highest cadre of British society by their first name. This includes the staff of the royal family. Titles such as Your Majesty, Your Royal Highness were created for a reason. Members of staff and those who formally interact with the royals are allowed to address them with these salutations. It's common courtesy to engage in socially acceptable behaviors. So if you're not a subject of the monarchy, when meeting the king, you're not obligated to bow or curtsy. However, it is courteous to address the king as your majesty and subsequently use sir. The same rule applies to the females of the royal family, except for the sir, it's changed for ma'am. Therefore, it's bad form for staff and strangers to address the royals by their first name. Number 16. The Back Rule Before the death of Queen Elizabeth, no one was allowed to turn their back on the queen because it was considered disrespectful. The rule still applies to the ruling monarch. Individuals can only leave a room after the king is left because they can't let the ruling monarch catch a glimpse of their back. Other royal members and their staff also follow a slightly modified version of this rule. Since it's unlikely that every royal family member will leave a room after addressing a member of staff, staff might be expected to walk backwards or angle their bodies in a way that their backs are not turned towards the royal to show their respect. This action and how it can be perfectly executed is likely taught during the orientation program for staff. Number 17. Gestures of Honor while this particular rule is quite cumbersome, the British monarchy is an institution deeply seated in old-fashioned conduct. So while other individuals have moved on to accept modern behaviors and culture, the monarchy firmly holds on to the old system and beliefs of doing things. While some of these actions and established system like the pageantry of their weddings, funeral processions, amongst others, have attracted the admiration of many fans, other outdated actions and beliefs, like royals only being allowed to wear black outfits when in mourning, have received more than a raised eyebrow. Another outdated habit of the royals is the penchant for staff members to curtsy or bow when they enter and exit a room with a royal member present. Generally, non-royals are not allowed to initiate physical contact with royals, so you cannot touch them or stretch out your hand for a handshake. Number 18. No pointing. In some cultures, it's considered rude to point at objects or people with your hands. For countries like Thailand, pointing with the toes is acceptable, but using your hands is slightly frowned upon. In the same vein, many parts of Europe, including the UK, disapprove of finger pointing. Royal staff members are prohibited from pointing at other people because it's considered a rude action. Christian Jarrett of BBC Focus magazine writes, pointing is associated with an old idiom to point the finger at, which implies blame allocation. He further writes, by pointing at someone without their consent, you automatically make them an object of scrutiny. Do you know other rules the royal staff have to adhere to? Let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed our video, give us a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any more. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.